what's good guys a warm welcome back to my channel you are watching what's the chat with your girl knobs so let's get straight into today's video guys welcome back to a new episode on what's the chat with your girl knobs my name is nobutla mataba and you are watching what's the chat with your girl knobs i'm joined here by my sister hi nosipo regular guest regular <laughs> guest uh before anything we are on the road to 1000 subscribers bum, 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 bum. <laughs> I need you to help me get there. If this is your first time visiting my channel, please do subscribe and check out all my other videos if you like what you see, because we are going to reach this goal. We are getting to 1K. It is happening no matter what. Uh, today, we are going to be discussing rape culture and consent, specifically in a university environment. I think, I don't even know what word to use to describe it. I think the past few weeks, the past month has been especially the TL has been heartbreaking and triggering and triggering to say the least um, gender-based violence in our country unfortunately is never it is like you, you can't call it like oh there's been a recent awareness for gender-based violence it's there all the time it's every day it's been there ever since we since from the day we were born up until now our parents know about it our grandparents know about it it's so prominent in south africa like the culture of violence in this country is so prominent that i can't even sit here and say that oh recently there's been a more of awareness of it um but i think being in lockdown and being and having other circumstances of our country change and to see this worsen um is extremely hard to see um there's a different article there's a different headline every single day um men don't want to stop killing us um, and it's a very it's a very difficult concept to even get into I think even for me when we speak about gender-based violence and we speak about rape culture and we speak about consent and all these things I think we do it with the aim to eradicate the issue or at least to I don't even know like to stay safe and for me it's like why do we even what is the point why do we even have these discussions why do we even constantly sit around and speak about the same thing when it's it seems now that it's just inevitable that you will lose someone to gender-based violence or you will know someone who knows someone if it's not you and for me that's a very scary realization um but anyway yeah we wanted to discuss gender-based violence from not from a different angle but we're speaking about consent and rape culture specifically um i think because for us well for me when gender-based violence and when i was when I became so hyper aware of this issue was in a university um, um, context, although it has been around for for long before that. I didn't even realize, like not I was thinking the other day, I didn't even realize how we were, how our parents tried to protect us from this culture, even from little. Mm -hmm. Like my mom always used to say, don't kiss my lumens on the lips, like uncles, like don't kiss uncles on the lips. And she was always so happy to say about who we were being around and just not being too friendly to strangers especially men and for me i never saw that as anything until now yeah and i think the thing that's a big realization for me specifically because i think my mom like protected us from a lot of things mm. when we were younger but like your your rapists are not just the random people mm. there are people you go to school with there are people you go to work with um mm. that's what our video is about they're your friends mm. you know so exactly and i think this video is not to um it's not a how-to video like it's not we're not here to say how not to be serious off in the situation um men are the ones that have declared this war on us but i think that there's certain conversations that we don't have about the culture of university and the lifestyle in which we live that is usually when these situations occur um and i think we don't speak enough about the mindset and the concept of consent um that people sh are that men specifically are just finding so difficult or do not want to understand and that's what we wanted to speak about today okay so uh, i want to start by speaking about consent so i think 
what bothers me especially in um being in university is that we were not taught about consent before coming to university even then it's not like and I'm not taught like it, like it's not about being educated about it, but we're, the word consent when it comes to sexual intimacy, having sex, I was never even a kiss, anything that's got to do with being intimate with someone. Um, I never knew about that word or even heard about it in conversation before coming to university. So that's the first problem for me. Um, I disagree with you. I think that we shouldn't have to be taught mm -hmm. what consent means. I think. From a young age you are taught you ask for something you don't just take something that's called stealing a lot of us you know when you're younger you get in trouble for just taking things mm. you ask for things so i think I, I think what's sad is that we have to teach people grown adults what consent is what asking for something is i mean i can't just come into someone's house and just take something i have to ask hey can i have yeah so i think i disagree with you i don't think it's something that we should be taught i think it's something that's a given like mm. if i want to experience your body if I want to experience part of you and our souls to be tired I need to ask you and I cannot I cannot just take that mm. I mean I understand that but the reason I say that is because the simple definition seems to not be working anymore over here it says consent the permission for something to happen or agreement um, to do something no change may be made without the consent of all the partners right so something happens it must be consented between both people for that not to happen but we get told that consent is can I have this yes or can I have this and no but when I come to think about it, consent means so much more than just no mm -hmm. right even if those words were not said I could have not consented to a certain situation and for me that's what I think I need what I would like for people to understand is that consent is not just do you want this to happen yes and so then oh or no I don't you didn't say no so it's not about that and I saw this thing the other day which got me thinking about it and this is when it comes into the university context because me and also speaking the other day that in university not just in university but it's more prominent here i think the college lifestyle or whatever the society has made it to be that casual sex is something that happens quite often mm -hmm. um yeah i think it's a choice people who want to do it do it people that don't want to do it don't do it and there's nothing wrong with it as long as you're safe and doing your thing but when it does come to casual sex i feel like consent becomes all of a sudden completely overridden mm -hmm. especially when it's with a stranger because people always say you know you've got to know the person that you're having sex with you've got to know the person that you're you know being intimate with etc 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 but then if you're if it's if you if it's in the hookup culture context and you know you're just picking up someone from the club where is that sense of consent yeah i think casual sex is the first like blurred line of consent mm. because I know how my friends are when they are drunk. I know how, you know, my guy friends are when they're drunk. So I can see, for me, when someone is too intoxicated to, to actually give me a proper answer. But mm. to pick up someone from the club or whatever. Mm. I don't know how drunk they are. They don't know how drunk I am. So I think for me, I think in the university setting, like casual sex is the, I don't know. I think, I think it's the biggest like problem. Mm. One of the biggest problems. I think it's like casual mm. sex. And we're not here to say that rape happens because you're having casual sex right. I, don't, I don't i don't even like the narrative that people aren't encouraged to be sexually liberated because i think that everybody should but often that is always where people seem not to take accountability for doing something wrong because it's like it was casual i was yeah. drunk i don't remember you know etc 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 um so when i saw this thing it was like no means no but so does i'm not sure i'm not comfortable with this let's chill like no maybe later another day not today i've changed my mind i don't like that i don't feel like it those still mean no like that you don't have to actually say no and for me the one that hit me the hardest i think especially when you're in a situation where you're with someone or whatever is the whole persuading convincing situation coercion, coercion. if you have to convince me into saying yes then i actually never really wanted to do it in the first place and that is going to take away the aspect of my comfortability and that's going to put us in a situation where I'm going to feel like I was forced. And that goes both ways, whether you're a guy, whether you're a girl. Yes, gender-based violence in this country has always been men who are the problem and we don't even have to get into statistics to understand that. But even in a university context, I've met gents who have also been in that same situation. And 
people that are in gay relationships that have still been in the same situation. You know, people think that a girl can't rape a girl or a guy can't rape a guy. It can happen. If two people or three or more, whatever people are, are involved in a situation where they're wanting to be sexually involved, consent needs to be extremely clear and it doesn't just it doesn't just start with the answer no. Another thing that I wanted to discuss, and this is something that I learned when I was in a production at the beginning of the year, and in one of the scenes we just we were discussing consent, and there's this consent model that was created. Um, it's called Fries. It's not like McDonald's fries or whatever. Um, that was like the joke in our thing. Like we're like it's not McDonald's fries, but it's an acronym, right, for consent, and it's F R I E S. So it starts with freely given. So that means like freely given you didn't coerce me into it i 100 percent was like let's do this i'm ready or it can be reversible this is one that i really want to emphasize because i think people think that we could be lying in bed together we could be having sex but if i in at whatever point mid i'm like, strokes, I'm mid like and i'm like no let's i don't I actually don't want to continue that's me not giving that's me taking back my consent it's reversible it doesn't mean no, but she said yes at the beginning of the night, but for how many weeks have we been talking and you wanted this, now you don't want that. It doesn't work like that. Informed, I must be enthusiastic. So an enthusiastic yes, like you must be so excited and is it must be extremely specific. And I think that's what for me must, is where um, casual sex becomes difficult because how do you know how to be specific? You can't though. How you specific can you be? You cannot be specific. Mm. You, if I'm drunk and you're drunk, mm. we can, I cannot be specific. Mm. Therefore, I did not give consent. Exactly. It wouldn't be a crime for me to wake up in the morning and say, well, I didn't. Yeah. Like, I didn't. It, it, that's I'm not a crime. And then it's going to be a matter of you violated me because it was not specific. And for me, I think casual sex is too, um, there's too many blurred lines. Like, it's too uncertain. It's too, there's no, there's no rules. There's and no rules for casual those sex. Those things give men the... The opportunity to, to to say well you yeah. said yes well, I think, and I think men also need to understand that casual sex is not an excuse mm. for you to violate women I think mm. that's what we're trying to say mm. is that it's not an excuse at all mm. and then I think when we speak about rape culture at university I think I see it in so many spaces that like I wouldn't even know where to start to dismantle it um, but for me the biggest thing I think is when you listen to conversations amongst people that's why I find conversations so important. That's why I'm all about chat. That's why we're here, always figuring out what the chat is because I think people are so f afraid to have conversations and to pay attention and to listen within their conversations to not understand that they actually perpetuate rape culture. So the biggest thing for me is when it comes to, to, to niggas and how they chop with their friends. The language they use. The language that they use initially, it, initially, it, 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 gives, a, it gives us a lot of clues on how they what they think of women and what they think about women when it comes to sex i mean for example using words like um so for example even like calling a girl like a ting or or that item or that ting or like just little things like that i can't there's so many like they 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 there's different lingo in different contexts so like there's Rhodes lingo or like joburg lingo but just the way that they refer to to girls like um you know this ting this, this whatever like it's just like a thing like it's already you've already reduced me to an object and the fact that niggas speak about girls like that like i do you not think that when they're in a situation where they're lying down with someone if they're thinking of you as a ting already they're not thinking about your comfortability first they're thinking of busting a nut and that's what's going to cause an issue in 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 the very end um just listening to the conversations that guys have even when speaking about casual sex like I think that guys think that if they're gonna casually have sex with you, they don't have to respect you. Mm -hmm. They don't have to treat you like a human being. They don't have to make you feel comfortable. Um, and that, uh, that, that, for me, the, the, that, that, that thing of using, yeah, that, that, that thing of, okay, I'm gonna use you for, you, I used you, used me, we're done with each other, let's dip. I don't understand that. I really don't. And I think that's one of the things that perpetuates rape culture is that constant idea of, okay, we're just going to do this for now. You don't matter to me. You, I see you're nothing. I don't see you as anything. I'm a dip. And it happens in even just the smallest of things. So that's just one thing for me in the university context that I've seen to be a bit shaky is that, that the, the conversation, the language that's used is what perpetuates rape culture, especially here in this context, because the niggas here over the weekend, they're ready to just 
smash as many goals as they can and they're referring to us as their things, um, I don't think they're thinking about consent. And that mindset already is what's going to put you in a situation where you're drunk and you're going to do something or say something and then you're going to wake up the next morning and it's going to be a different story. I agree. I also think, um, apart from the language, also entitlement. I think the language yes. also shows entitlement that men have mm. towards women. I, th I, mean, I think it's funny. Like We make jokes all the time about mm. dark things on Twitter. Mm. We get that. But I think dark humor and dark jokes have some sort of meaning behind them. Mm. I think whatever joke you make, even if it's 1% meaning, like there's some meaning in that. Mm. You know, and um, I also think what perpetuates rape culture in our university, for example, are the rules, for example, in male races towards mm. female races. When we were in race, our female race was very, very strict in terms of times. And when you can have visitors and who can sleep over and things mm. like that. Um, male races don't have that. And it's something that's small, but I think it perpetuates rape culture because they're saying that, okay, females are the ones supposed to be protected mm. and told what to do. And they're the ones supposed to adhere to rules. But men don't have to do that. When we're not the problem. I mean, there was a system yeah. of a sign-in book where you sign people in. So if you have a visitor, I'll sign us in and she's got to leave at a certain time and whatever, whatever, whatever. When we go to the mail raises, those books are collecting dust. They don't even care to keep tabs of who's coming in and out of the building. And these niggas know that. They know that they can bring you in and no one's even going to know that you're there. But instead of making sure that the rules are even tied to the male raises who are the perpetuators of these situations, they are boyfriends, they are best friends, they are friends with benefits, they are guy friends, they are brothers. Those are the people that are doing this to us and they're not keeping tabs on them but they're keeping tabs on the girl raises. That's another, that's exactly, that's like problem number one. Yeah. I think also I want to talk about alcohol. I think that I don't like this concept of using alcohol as an excuse. Um, I think that drinking alcohol is a choice just like anything else in life and yes, the, 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 the people say alcohol, you know, you become a different person, whatever, 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 but if you even just look at research, alcohol only amplifies like your most basic personality and when you're drunk, you're less afraid, okay, that's the, that's the truth, when you're drunk, they say that you're less afraid. The things that you're afraid to say when you're sober are things that you say. You know, people always say sober drunk words or sober thoughts, things like that. Yes, as much as it's that small, for me, it has a lot to do with rape culture because if you have a specific intention to do something, meaning make it, you being drunk or you having a, or being intoxicated or being under the influence, it's only going to amplify that intention. So also, yes, we might be drunk and yes, we can sit here and say, let's try and not have casual sex, which is not what we're saying, by the way, but we can stand here and say, okay, let's not do this, let's not do that. But who are the people that you're lying down with? Who are the people that you're having sex with? Who are the people that you're sitting in intimate spaces? Do you know these people well enough to know what their intentions are when they're sober in comparison to when they're drunk? Because to me, it's the same thing. Yeah, and I also want to speak about... Um, the going out culture that exists in mm. university. Um, I'm not going to talk about other spaces. I'm going to talk about uh, mm. my university specifically. But I know here um, we have about like four, four like club pubs things, mm. like a couple. Yeah, and um, I've seen sometimes they say like ladies free mm. from like a certain time. And yes, that's okay. It's all nice. Our ladies don't have to pay. But what is the meaning behind that? Mm. The real reason behind that is because. The women are for the guys. Yes, they need, they need, it's image, right? They need more hands in the club to, so satisfy, that, the to satisfy the guys, which is why they'll say, okay, let's see, in order for us to attract girls into the club, let's not have to make them pay for entrance. Um, for guys. For guys. Because and if for they that actually own, really wanted females, they just have a females only exactly. night. Exactly. They'll just do that though. If they're doing it for the girls, they would just make it free for all of us without niggas having to be there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, even that, not 100% free for girls, girls free entrance up until 10 p.m. So the niggas know, all right, by 10, we're gonna get to the club oh, gonna and it's gonna be full. And what's that for? What is that for? That is for scouting. That's for fishing. That's for who can I take home? And they're not there to meet their wives. They're trying to see who they can take home. And um, that's scary to me because why is it that even if we look at the clubbing culture and the culture of groove, what keeps that alive? And why are females such a huge part of it? All right, so I think that's just from us. I would love to see in the comments what do you think perpetuates rape culture um, and specifically consent in the university um, environment. This is one of those topics that we have to continue to, as much as it's very it's ridiculous to have to say that, but it's something that we have to continuously learn about. 
um, because the problem doesn't seem to stop happening. Um, but yeah, I just want to say, also my heart, my heart bleeds for everyone that has been in a situation who is experiencing the wrath and the extreme pain that comes with gender-based violence. Um, <coughs> And honestly, Cyril Ramaphosa actually said a few weeks ago, he was like, the men of South Africa have declared a war on the women. Um, and that's the fight that we're fighting. I just pray that whatever this demon is that has infested like this, this violence within our country, that um, God can make it make sense or he can give us the peace to you to understand it to, to survive if you liked today's video please don't forget to like subscribe and comment and i will be back with more videos mm -hmm.